This is the heap of only, only today. This is our today. daily quota. Wow. So many wanting to be That's a member. That's fantastic. Yeah, because this is, this is historic for us. Yeah, it yeah, really is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's, there you go. You know, that's so great to have it immediately. It makes a big difference. We, oh, we access that from internet. I see. When you got your ask All the greats. All the great writers uh -huh. of Indian cinema. Uh -huh. Or wall of fame. And this year is a waiting, this is a waiting hall for visitors who come to become members or get their skip register. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you come here. Okay. Don't. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank you so, so much. These are gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful. But, uh, yes. 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 Some of the things that we have thought out here uh, is one is holding a seminar. Because there is, despite the fact that our films have been actually, uh, you know, many uh, <coughs> films and many filmmakers have been inspired by the Hollywood narrative, there is a difference, a marked difference between the Hollywood narrative and the Bollywood. I mean, I, I hate the term, but now it has come so much into usage that I just can't but use it. So uh, there is a marked difference between the Hollywood narrative and the Bollywood narrative. And uh, I, I mean, this is uh, actually our view that probably because we studied the Hollywood narrative more than the Hollywood uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, in order to, you know, yes. in order to understand ke how to plagiarize mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then how to make it actually contextualized it with our elements. We have, you know, uh, a certain, um, uh, you can call them the peculiar Bollywood structure involves certain elements which are, which have to be there in every film. Now, at least the pan-Indian films, because what has happened over the last 10 years, that there are changes and young filmmakers are challenging the age-old convention of narrative. So, uh, and these uh, elements are I mean, uh, songs and dances, uh, melodrama, rhetoric, and uh, you know, comedy track actually was a must at one time here. Yeah. So all this is there. Now, what we were thinking, if it's possible to hold uh, a one-day seminar between the American writers and suppose the, I mean, because it would be very, very difficult for your, you know, entire contingent to come here. And suppose we have a delegate of writers who go there and hold a one-day uh, seminar and, you know, I mean, we, since we are college, <coughs> so studio presence is very much here now, you know. Yeah. So we just talk about what Indian uh, narrative is actually. You know. Because uh, even the regional uh, films follow uh, the pattern of what the, you know, established Hindi popular uh, film structure is. That, that's how it happened, that's how it began, that's how the history evolved. Uh, <coughs> Now, and along with that, suppose we have an entire spectrum of films that we, uh, that are picked up from popular cinema. It is, I mean, it's, these are not niche. And we hold an Indian film festival there and actually introduce you in a very, very conscious way what the Indian popular cinema is. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and this would be, you know, a four or five day thing, whatever, depending on, mm -hmm. you know, on, I mean, we can work out the details. So, that's one of the proposals. Mm -hmm. The second one uh, uh, is, uh, you have now, there are the studios that have come here, Fox is here, 
Sony is here and uh, then Disney. you have Disney is here. Yeah, Warner's. Warner's here. Warner's here. So, and we have of course now uh, some of uh, one, at least one production house has already, you know, entered <laughs> your Hollywood. Uh, so, but what is happening is, let's say for example, all these studios who have their presence here, when they employ Indians, you know, they apply different yardstick. Mm -hmm. I mean, the you know, it's not the same as it is in the U.S. I mean, it is happened, 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 happened to me. You know, there was this American, you know, Hollywood company. Uh, they wanted to be, well, they, they wanted to take my script to produce, and they sent me an agreement to sign. And I said, if you get this agreement signed by a WGA member, mm -hmm. I'll wait for free. <laughs> I will do this film for free. Can you do that? I couldn't. So, so I, I refuse the project. So, so what happens is if in any way uh, that uh, you know that the GA could intervene and yeah. see to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they so they are trying to to force to more exploit on, us. a more onerous contract yeah. on you than yeah. they would. Yes, us. and yeah. it's a it's a very very uh, you know serious matter as far as we are concerned. Yeah. And uh, the the third is you. Yeah, yeah, please, please. This is also a continuation of the discussion with David Young about this. Where we were discussing okay, what would be the benefits of us actually helping each other. Why would what would be WGA's motive, for example, in seeing that yes, the Indian Association, the Indian Union, I mean our guild at WA, actually manages to pull the minimum basic contract through. Essentially, it was so that there is a parity. Why? Because if a Hollywood director were to come here and work, then he would want that kind of protection. Yes. Okay. Yes. And likewise, the other way around. Okay. The other way around, already you do have a certain contract, which most certainly is a better contract than we have yet been able to enforce. So, given this, I am saying one of the ways also is that the studios there, since you do have a relationship with them, if some pressure can be brought upon them, or in whichever way that guild sees fit then it would most certainly accelerate this process. Because if the studios, which effectively now they have started controlling more than 50% of the production because of the money which they've got yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Viacom, Sony, okay, Fox, others are beginning to come in, Walt yeah, Disney has taken over. So in which case then it would help. So if I'm saying if this proposal can be put there, now this talk I did have with David. So he said, let's, let's consider it, let me discuss it with my colleagues. So I'm still putting it to you yes. here, that if you can take it back, Rebecca, and then have a word and see if it is possible. It has to fit within your political framework. Yes, yeah. 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 Well, certainly as a, as a union, we worry about what we call the race to the bottom worldwide, which is the, the chance that the studios would do exactly what they're doing go somewhere else, hire writers at a fraction of what they pay us, and then you know start a film industry somewhere else without us. So our protection is to make sure that you get paid, you know, somewhat close to what we get paid, so that there's not that incentive for the studios to do that. From so from a you know just from our, our own self protection, it would benefit us, and that's that's a good thing because that gives us an incentive to yeah. to, to you know. Also, Tom, one of, if I remember right, I mean, from again discussions with them, that one of the uh, chief motivations for the IAWG to come up mm -hmm. was also so that if at all there is a strike in one of these countries, mm -hmm. you know, then we need to have an understanding amongst all the guilds that they can't come here and start hiring us. Yes. Okay. In which case, it, it, it actually undermines your strike, That's weakens right. your strike. So that international solidarity is required. For that, it is important, therefore, that there has to be some kind of mutual. Sort of accountability that if an Indian company is going to be working there, then it also becomes our imperative to try and put pressure on them. Okay, to ensure that not that at the moment, as it happens, Hollywood writers, because of the strong union that they have, are in the best position yes. compared to all other guilds. Yes. But nonetheless, I'm saying we need to ensure that all other guilds also do come up. So if we're talking about, say, a Pakistani company or a Bangladeshi or any of these other Asian companies, then it becomes our job to ensure that our companies don't go there and start using exploitative practices there which we don't allow here. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, yeah. that international solidarity, I mean, it, it's the right time which has come. Absolutely. So, yeah. it is in the context also of that. Yeah. And then the other thing which uh, I don't know how much Hollywood is concerned about it. We have been plagiarizing new films for donkey's years. <laughs> and we plagiarize our own films. Yeah, yeah. So, now what we were thinking, 
lately, of course, because of the presence of your studios here, the, the, the issue of this uh, copyright thing has come up. We have started finally by the rights. But we have been violating uh, the copyright. And now in that, if any has, I mean, the initiative has to be yours. But in every which way, the Film Writers Association would be very, very, very active to help you out in this regard. For the simple reason that we also want that this practice should stop. Because we are concerned with our own copyrights. And then we can't allow other people's uh, copyright to be violated. And uh, we are, you know, I mean, what is happening is that for our cinema to grow, like Iranian cinema grew, because it was not inspired by that. So we would like that finally at least this young generation learns what are the roots of our culture. So in that way, this would be an oblique effort on our part an indirect approach, mm -hmm. that how do we actually evolve our own cinema which is, you know, uh, which is relevant to the uh, contemporary reality. Because at one time, and particularly in 40s and 50s, our cinema was really indigenous. Yeah. Just, despite the fact that few films, purely by way of uh, look and dresses, was inspired by Hollywood, but the spirit, and characters were Indians. Yeah. You know, uh, the issue of release form, you know, we talked about it yesterday. Yes. Yes. They put a clause that if, for example, they do not make a film on your script and they happen to make a subject which is similar and almost very similar, you can't have a claim. Right. Their excuse is something the executive of the issue he was talking about. He, if, for example, an Indian writer he copies a Hollywood film, and he gets it registered here and he's, he goes to sell that to a production house. Now the, the, the excuse from them is simple, that if I take your script, we don't know whether it's copy or not. If we take it, tomorrow for example, we decide to buy remake rights of that Hollywood film, which was made earlier, whose copyright is going to be? So, by the way, we are asked to sign similar release forms. In the United States, you know, so it's a very uh, scary looking document. Yeah. If, we read, if we read your script, we can steal. But you know that, that turns out to not be enforceable. Uh, yes. Even though you sign that form, if they steal something, you still own the copyright. Therefore, you know you, you have the rights to. So coming back to the point, yeah. we would definitely like to have. Uh, you know, you can take it back. In fact, Vinay, what we'll discuss is we'll go a step further and we'll urge you actually yeah. to actually initiate <laughs> action. Because right. earlier the feel was that oh, Indian courts, it's not enforceable, things go on and on. Wait. And then plus the stakes weren't very high because the whole the, the, the returns which films were earning was nothing compared to what Hollywood films were earning. But now things are changing in right. both respects. And the, this guild here association is strong enough to be able to enforce that. Yeah. So we would in fact urge you and if you need any help in terms of vigilance from us, we would go to the extent of offering that vigilance to us that we, yes. if, we, if it yes. comes to our notice, we would be able to inform your guild. Then let your guild and the member decide whether they would like to initiate action and we do have a very strong dispute settlement committee and because of our affiliation with the federation and because of the threat of non-cooperation that the federation is able to declare if one of their decisions is violated with the joint dispute settlement committee then in which case they declare a non-cooperation against that producer and all the 22 unions go tools down so that fellow can't make his film because all the uh, workers are affiliated to these unions which is affiliated to the, which are affiliated to the federation so that threat is most certainly there and it becomes enforceable so if the film writers association today calls for the biggest producer or the biggest star who might be a producer to the table to come and defend his case because there's been an accusation he has to come because of this threat commission of uh, non cooperation so i'm saying it is you can take that back though i have mentioned it to them but since you've been here that it is, it is, there is a very, very high possibility of enforcement of this. In which case we would urge you 
actually to initiate action and we will do the, the rest here. We start back with your first notion of a yes. conference or some sort of, you know, yes. my sense is that, that the Hollywood community in general and the Los Angeles community all need to be educated about it. Yes. Yes. So I think that somehow Absolutely. a festival of some sort that could be organized yeah. by you, but we could bring elements to that such as perhaps the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science, yeah. which I don't think, at least not since I've been here, has done Cinema. You know, because you know, the uh, a feeling might we miss out often on Oscar is simply because our grammar of storytelling mm -hmm. is, is so different. Yes. Perhaps the Academy mm -hmm. cannot relate to it or understand it or appreciate it. This is why we miss out. In fact, our old classic Mother India, it went to the last prime. It lost out to some other film. Just one by Fellini's film. Fellini's film. Mm -hmm. Obviously. So, I mean, there's this concern. In fact, many of us have become very cynical. Who gives a damn about Oscar? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's come to that point. Yeah. But I think if we can build a bridge and try to communicate to mm -hmm. them, they think this is our grammar of storytelling, mm -hmm. our, in, you know, rooted in our soil. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, you know, there's a better chance for ourselves mm -hmm. to work there. Right. Because and our music is already working there. Our music is working all over the world. So why not our storytelling? There is this legend about this Oscar. The Mother India is one of our most celebrated classics. And um, it's true, despite the fact that the narrative is this structured loosely, it has a very, perhaps, the most dramatic story ever filmed anywhere in the world. And I hold by that. So, uh, when the film, it was uh, in the first five, it was, you know, it was selected, shortlisted uh, for Oscars. And it lost by one, and the reason being songs there. And this is what the legend yeah. is that uh, they wanted him to remove uh, the song. song. And Abu Khan song, the director, uh, uh, producer director of the film, said that if you want to delete the songs, you don't have to watch my film. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but I, I would I would like to see if an effort could be made to coordinate the, the Academy, the Writers Guild Foundation, yep. and perhaps the the uh, uh, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, which yes. does a lot sure. of yeah. and, and do some sort of festival to raise you know awareness of, and, and and passion yeah. in yeah. the community for Indian cinema as a as a run up to a conference that would then that would generate more interest in the conference, particularly but, amongst yeah. our members. When I was last time I was there, this the follow-up discussion with Chris yes. was in fact that he spoke with uh, the uh, president of the academy, which yes. is Howard. Uh, Koch, yes. Ka yeah. yeah, no, Howard uh, uh, Bach. Yeah. Hawk. 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 Ah, Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he I'm just trying to get that email. He copied me on that, and he said that he, because the awards are coming up, so he's rather yeah. busy. Yeah. And the message that he forwarded to me from uh, Howard was a uh, hawk, whatever. Was that uh, once the awards are over, give me a week, and I'm very interested in this. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain yeah. interest. Good, good. Plus, what you mentioned and what Chris mentioned about the WGA Foundation. Yes. That. And then the third angle was uh, to see if there can be an involvement of Hollywood Health and Society, mm -hmm. actually, in some way. But that, we thought that we should do programs here itself. Because, and then we got in touch with Hollywood Health and Society and they said they would do it, but it was too early for them to involve themselves in the conference. So we're planning something in August. So I'm saying a little bit of groundwork in principle has seems to have been put in motion. So this, I mean, there seems to be a synchronicity in the way in which you are thinking. So maybe the time has come, you're right, sort of try and pave the ground and then actually hold an event. Yeah. There well, can I'm be I'm on the, the board of the, the Writers Guild Foundation and uh, oh, okay. we're getting a new executive director in about a month. Oh, okay. So once the dust settles on that, I would want to put whoever that is, you know, in charge and, and perhaps spearheaded from the foundation. I think it would be a good thing for the foundation and also, you know, might help the academy move forward a little faster because they have so many things on their plate. So perhaps our new executive director, I could put, I don't know if it would be a, a male or a female, put them in touch with you and we can start to work that. It would be a target of maybe doing it, uh, you know, next fall, in October, September, October. Why not? You know, so that's, that's, that's a good target. That's and, a doable and, and target. Then, and then, uh, you know, with shortly after, if a group of you would come to Los Angeles, the foundation could then perhaps show a movie or two on a, on a Friday night, and then on a Saturday, maybe Saturday, Sunday, we could have a conference and talk about, you know, issues that... that uh,
By all means, absolutely do it. Absolutely do it. Okay. Yeah. okay, so there's a plan. That's a plan. There's a plan. Yes. Uh, You're not, you won't be coming to Toronto for the IWGA GM. I don't think so. You won't be acting. I'm, I'm not on the board of leadership of the Guild anymore. Yeah, I think Chris and yeah. Chuck. Uh, yeah. 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 Because yeah. most probably one of us will go. Because we do intend to keep that going. The W cost we missed at the World Conference in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asked to go, but my mother fell critically ill, so I said at the last moment I have to pull out. But then I did go back to Los Angeles. Right. Yeah. When, when is the next guy? It's in first, second, third of uh, because this time the, the Canadian Guild is hosting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's Maureen right and. Before uh, the Toronto film well, no, I think after because it's first, second, third of October is what they told us. Oh, okay. That seems well, to be the. How many of you will go? Just you? In all probability, one. Okay. You know, we sort of How many would you want to send to Los Angeles if you did a conference? I think about three. Three, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, these are the points that one and, thought and, out, but we can, you know. And, and, at that time, we would then, I think, want to, you know, you guys can make a, a more formal presentation to our board about some of these other issues, and we'll, of course, talk about it then. You will be a follow up. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, our board yeah. meetings are on Monday nights, so ideally you'd come on a Friday, we'd have a conference, films on Saturday, Sunday, and let's stay and make a presentation to our board. And then, uh, you know, then everything just goes. No, no, absolutely. I mean, it's very important now. I mean, guild to guild, there should be, you know, absolutely. conversations. Yeah. Uh, you know, Rebecca and I have spoken here. We're very impressed and excited for you about the progress you're making with your contract. And, you know, yeah, yeah. So then it's, yes. it's, uh, because that was our main thing that once we reach the negotiation table and the collective <laughs> bargaining process begins, frankly speaking, then and only then did we really feel that hey, I think we are a union. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> right. yeah. Otherwise, we are merely a collection of individuals who are sort of thinking, oh, okay, I mean, seminars, conferences, workshops, yeah. of course, very, very important. But the most important thing for a union is protection of Absolutely. their members' yeah. rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, as I mentioned publicly, it took I mean, three and a half years merely to bring them to the table, Tom. Yeah. I mean, it has been. I'm surprised you got it done that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just to begin, just to convince them that I think it is important that we at least contemplate the possibility of a contract between us, you know, between the stand a standardized contract, yeah. a collective agreement. Anyway, now, it, then it moved quite quickly, actually, frankly. So all which I said yesterday is actually true. I mean, it did move quickly and we do, I mean, despite the sort of, uh, he was a bit circumspect because he could not officially make a commitment to right. that. So which is why he had said that I will have to be publicly cautious about it because I am not, I mean, we haven't still carried the council, but informally he's spoken with them and he said very openly that those other two organizations are quite willing and that the third, he's already spoken with the president who said yes, this sounds like a good idea. Because of late also what has happened is that certain films which did not carry the standard commercial elements like big stars or great production values or, you know, successful songs, so music is a big attraction to get the people into the theater, but merely the fact that it had a very good script. You see, so yeah. that then fortunately these examples are very recent. In the last two years we've had about half a dozen such very clear, prominent examples of successful films which were the only factor which really worked was the dance script. Right, right. You know? yeah. So yeah. and the rest fell into place. So this also proved the point. Yeah. I said that you need to attract talent and therefore you need to pay and so all those things seem to sort of coincide and that helped us. Yes. Those yes. those those incidents helped us in bringing them to the table. So I don't think we it is going to stall now. Well, the producers were as enlightened as any of the, you know, yeah. smooth right? yeah. fabulous. It is. See, the point is also why are they exploitative? Why have they been? Because they could. Yeah. So the point is to make it difficult for them to be that. Right. You know, to create this resentment, you know, that there will be. I mean, up, having gone so far, having had a public commitment today, by the way, Indian Express carried it. One of the national newspapers actually carried that session on the second page. Just ask for the Indian Express, it's there. Deepthi Nagpal actually wrote it. So if it's becoming public in this way, and then if they begin to suppose, God forbid, they begin to backtrack. Begin. Imagine the wall of resentment which this is going to cause, that, oh, but they promised that it would go through. So which is why what we're doing is strategically making sure that word does spread. At the conferences, it became very important to actually introduce it to the community from the horse's mouth, that this is how far we moved. So then they, there is a certain commitment in principle. 
this one. So I am saying we are hopeful and I do feel that latest by the end of the year, hopefully before the IAWG, okay, that whoever goes from here should be actually able to slap it on the table and say we did it. We pulled this through. Well, he was urging you to set a strike date of, of January 2011. <laughs> so that is the thing. <laughs> uh, it's hard to believe I can hear a producer suggesting such a thing. Yeah. But he's right, you know, and he's enlightened enough to realize that it's actually better for business if there's one organization like yours which, you know, has sets the standards and they just make one contract and then all the, the legal and financial headaches of that are gone. And our, I think our producers over the years have come to realize that as much as they don't like us, when we ask for more than they want to give, then having us around is a benefit to them. In fact. Yes, yes. In fact. So, and and all these individual cases, I'm saying so many things will become easy for them, you see, because all those disputes, etc., will get channelized through us if we become as strong as we want to yeah, be. So, so in fact, they don't have to deal with 17 different fronts which are open with a single window clearance here. But once you complain to the guild, the guild takes care of it. That's right. That's right. They have begun to recognize that KWL is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. It has now got sharper teeth. And longer days, right. which is what they really received. <laughs> and the conference, you know, is an organizing tool, is a way of sort of getting your, you know, the community to, to buy into the to, to a, a union. This is great. It's just you know, yeah. hats off. To I mean, it helps us both. Yes, helps us both. Yes, because even creatively, you get it. Mm -hmm. Getting to know the other culture and the other form of narrative. Yeah. Also, it kind of, Tom, uh, kind of pains us to say this, but it's been a rather old union, it's been around for a long time and all this should have been done much earlier. And it's just the fact that it just became, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say this, like an old boys club. You see, even this office which you see here, which Kamalesh is so very justifiably proud of, because after this new gang, all of us came in, we actually stormed the elections, actually and campaigned, I mean, vigorously and made sure that those people who never even knew where the AGMs were held or what the elections were, who were the office bearers, they, most of the people are not interested. Most of the successful writers, they never took anything seriously, because they managed on their own. So we made sure that we rallied them together and brought them in and made them active in that so that we, we could come in. So therefore we have this new committee. Yeah. Is, so what ought to have been done? literally about 25, 30 years ago, in which case today we would merely be renegotiating those yeah. agreements every two years and getting better terms and we'd be talking at a very different level. But anyway, better late than never. So the point is it's a cumulative thing. That does. So what harmed us is the impression which had consolidated for decades that, ah, FWA, come on, give us a break. I mean, who takes it seriously for God's sake? I mean, we were just the butt of jokes. People didn't even know where the office was. So whatever it is, so now therefore we have to, in a double quick time, make up for all those lost years and reverse that impression, which is why these series of these large conferences, etc., you know, which one of the intangible gains is this, that yes. it, it makes you prominent there, I mean, important writers coming, actors coming to give awards. Right. Yeah. Who the hell took us seriously? Right. Right. And you get the message out. Exactly. And we get the message out. Yeah. You know, that's that's people wanting to become a member. Our membership has shut up. I, mean, I, I showed you the bunch of forms. That's for one day. That's only for today. They want to become a member. So our membership is going up like cream while you know, this team came. Obviously, there is so much excitement and hope in that. Among the new writers who can now things will happen. Things are happening. Well, we, we had a similar issue with the Writers Guild starting in about 2005, yeah. you know, where we of us realized the guild had really become Moreland for 20 years since the 1988 strike. Right? Right, yeah. uh, you know, but you were still having those, con every every two years the contract with the NBA uh, it's, was? It's usually every three. But, uh, and by the way, I like every two. I think every two is, is better to start than every three. You know, it keeps the membership engaged. Our members just go to sleep between contract negotiations. Three years later, they go, oh, not again, please. So, uh, <laughs> but if it's coming up more often, I think it keeps the membership involved in a way that's, that's, that's healthy. Uh, but yeah, we, we were still having negotiations, but the negotiations were essentially between, between a union that was had no teeth. You know, we essentially signaled to the companies, we're not interested in striking anymore. Please just give us a little crumbs each time, and we'll just go away. And uh, yeah, for 20 years, that was the way it was. So, 
uh, and the crumbs got smaller and smaller. And they were, you know, we were giving them the crumbs. So um, we just decided enough of this. And uh, but so it was a similar thing. A group of members who didn't know where our building was, and knowing, you know, suddenly they're on picket lines. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that was yeah, spectacular, yeah. Tom. Yeah, yeah. And you managed to stall the uh, what the Golden Globe Awards. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. had the actors down with yeah, you. Yeah, we were about to stop the Academy Awards. Oh, yeah, I know. And that, in yeah. fact, I suspect that is actually the threat that we brought them to the damn yeah. table. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But Tom, yeah. Tom, tell me how you managed to get these big stars on the side, like Clooney and Tom Hanks and Brad Pitt and all this, you know. They, they as they, stars as much the as they wanted to go to the Academy Awards, some part of them could not cross our picket lines. You know, <laughs> we, we uh, you know, Rebecca was part of this. The the, the staff and, and we get leadership just got those members out there marching day in day out, and they got a lot of publicity. And people were sort of, you know, on the public was on their side in a big way. And the, 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 at first, even the Directors Guild, you know, who really wanted to negotiate a contract much sooner than they did, even they couldn't do it because they said, we can't, we can't cross these lines. You know, it's, it would make us look, uh, we would be ashamed to <coughs> actors the same way. So, uh, and we started from the beginning with the actors on our side. The institution, yeah. Screen Actors Guild, was very much in our corner. They were with us in every public rally. They made speeches on our behalf. So their members, like it or not, lined up with us, and you know that was it really. Maybe we, we should also look into that. You know, no, that's what I was saying. The Senior Artists Association is hardly active. See, yeah, but, but it's just it's it's an option. We need to try and we have to try. We must try. I mean, so we can the explore the possibility. Actors who have more sensible. One can explore the possibility. Yeah. Amanda Hemaji said that day, <coughs> and I mentioned that you know I didn't expect any actor to come to our conference, but uh, you have saved them. <laughs> then you know, we only speak what you write. So if that's the kind of attitude change in you know, the actors, why not? I mean, and in this country, if you want a crowd, get the actor. Mm -hmm. Get the actor. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I think we should also consult, consciously try and get, try to get them on our side. I mean, at least few of them, like Amir, and, you know, Bachchan and Shahrukh, I don't think you will mind all that much. Even if you get three or four of the leading ones. I think you're fine. I think, you know, yeah. I'm just going to say just a little, a little uh, background information, a little secret information about yeah. what happened with the Golden Globes yeah. is that actually it, it is true the Screen Actors Guild was supportive. It is true that actors came out on the picket lines, but before the Golden Globes, we had a meeting with the publicists of the actors. Okay. And the okay. publicists were terrified about what would happen to their clients' reputation okay. if the clients said that they would go to the Golden Globes. So there was this secret a good organizing idea. principle I about that. This, 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 this is the idea. This you are teaching us how to write this. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that idea. A little bit of background information. That yes. <laughs> if, if we go to the media that this particular actor is against writers, boy, mm. let's see what happens. Yeah. 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 Solidarity is better. It's better to organize with yes. solidarity. <laughs> However, every once in a while, it's not oh, bad. Oh, but that's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would love, we would love some yeah. more of them because we yeah. are getting into the same situation. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps we will have to ultimately go to yeah. the streets. Well, we get line and all that. The takeaway for me after the strike was, you know, one ta if possible, if we had it to do over, and I mentioned this when I made my remarks the other day, that, that it would be one town, one union. <laughs> You know, it would be everyone together. So many of the unions, but particularly the actors, the writers and directors, have, have many things in common that, that, that they want and need. And if they could just get together just for that, they can argue about creativity and everything else, you know, but, but just to be as one sort of, you know, strong fist against the, you get everything you want in, in no time, everybody. Would. And, but instead, in Hollywood, the unions tend to fight each other and sort of go their own way, and it it's, hasn't been productive. Been very destructive. The directors guild negotiated our contract during the strike. That's what, I mean, that's what they did. You know, their, their contract, uh, our contract came up in November of 2007. Theirs was not up until uh, July of 2008. And yet, in uh, December of 2007, they started threatening to go in and have early negotiations on their contract. Why? Because they just wanted. But they, what they were really trying to do was go in and settle all the issues that we were fighting the producers about, and and in the strike, and that's what they did. In January, they went in and had a.
three or four week negotiation with the companies and came out with, they were talking about the same issues we were coming in, they sort of took the lowest possible amount of gains to the, hoping that they would make our members happy enough to, to walk off the picket line. It was a very destructive thing and two, you know, you know, shouldn't be doing yeah, that. No, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. So, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. one or two. In the model contracts. Okay, now you guys are getting royalty, so why are you? Why you expect so much money? Right. You're getting a royalty. You don't think it's going to happen? Anu? What? Right. I mean, in the light of royalties that we... See, some. See, are some they going to sort of yeah, yeah, see. put some yeah. pressure on us? Some amount of give and take, some amount of negotiation margins we have kept there. But right now what we're doing is trying to get before the uh, royalty tariffs. Yeah. are actually confirmed by the copyright board. Yes, Already, yes, this, so we all, all we have managed to get through is that, okay, let's not touch upon the royalty, because earlier I put down 25% okay. as royalty on everything. So we said, okay, let's leave that aside, let that negotiation with the government take this, let's sign this part. Yeah. So fair enough. So in which case it's in our favor, because actually they should be factoring that in, that okay, there's a whole lot of back end and other things which should be getting. But it doesn't matter. At the most, in the next time, if there's a little bit of tweaking, it doesn't matter. Overall, if our writers are gaining significantly, when it will go up leaps from what right now the average uh, sort of pay is or average fee is. So in which case, some amount of negotiation, we don't mind some bargain. Uh, or at least push it through. You know, this, for the education side of it, uh, does Chaturji have its own strip library? Is there a library of it? In screen things and so on and so forth. The, fact, the Renders Guild Foundation has the money. Yeah, and is it possible to access it somehow for our members or MWE and so on? Can we uh, offer that to our members? I can find out. I think a lot of our scripts are online. Yeah, they're so, not. Uh, not all of them, but yeah. there are quite a few now. Yeah. There's no copyright issues on that as well. Well, the Foundation is making an effort to put all of the scripts online. Yeah. And I think that should be happening over the next year, year and a half. Even if it's online, there's no problem. Yeah. I mean, we can um, have our members read online and download or take a print out. Yeah. Yeah. Because the uh, lack of the scripts, available scripts in this country has been a big problem. Yes. I mean, I had to, when I started, I had to buy expensive screenplays, other screenplays. To study them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so on and so forth. Also, the books on script writing. I mean, there's Hit Me Down or Mickey or anybody else. That's how one sort of done this up, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah, but now for several years, in fact, on yeah. Drew's scriptorama or simply scripts, I have thousands of scripts. Yeah. See, yeah. the ratio, I've, let me just clarify. The budget that he announced, that fellow who approached me saying, please get me some good writers, you know, from mm -hmm. the budget that he had was $400,000. And the fee that I insisted on was $20,000. Okay, that's, that's a healthy... Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. that is the issue. I just did the calculation, yeah. the maths for rupees and... <laughs> so he would have offered more than $5,000. Yeah. The writer yeah. himself would not have imagined, let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. Because that's the expectation, general expectation. He would have accepted. Right. We, we, a writer would have accepted. Have been, you know, most of the writers have been conditioned to think that their worth is very, very low. Yeah. And we accept that. Yeah, yeah. Very, very willingly we accept that. It's the same all over the world apparently. Yeah. Because it's the, that's the way it is in the United States too. You know, the HIV is the same way. You know, Anjum, the legal side as well, I mean, that internal thing that we need to discuss later on. Uh, how to make our legal side stronger? Legal representation in case it is required in the law form or the visual lawyers or whatever. Uh, I don't know whether we, we can have some learning. See, that is that, that clear. That what, in fact, what I would suggest, if uh, Vinay, it's uh, okay with you guys, that this this meeting to discuss sort of joint uh, activities, proposals, etc., more or less we have. What would be now valuable, which I had requested Rebecca for, is that if Kamlesh, okay, and uh, Abhijit, you, maybe even me, if need be, for the organizational structure, if we can sit with Rebecca, Rebecca, I mean, it's, it's, it's for us very precious that she is here. She understands the organization fully. Yeah. She understands the thing in structure. Yeah. We're kind of new to it. Yeah, we, we have some ideas. So the like internal structure, if we can also share with her, yeah. you know, and we can see of Tom and the others, so that we can sit maybe in a more yeah. intimate way and discuss 
Yeah. Okay, so, what, what our structure compared there, yeah. and she can give us mm-hmm. tips. Yeah, what maybe we strengthen this. Yeah. Maybe you can do this. You will need as you go forward once the MBA is in place for enforcement. You might need to employ some three people of us on this front, this that. What about broad guidelines if we can get from us, Rebecca? Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Because, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.